I'm just the usual story, I guess. My father left when I was about four, and I spent a lot of my formative years looking for father figures to fill the hole, for lack of a better phrase. But I still always looked up to him as an almost mythical superhero that could do no wrong. I became too much for my mom and ended up living with my aunt, but I left her at 16. Thing is, I always felt kind of disturbed. I mean, mostly kept to myself, but hung out with the hippies and the goths at school. I guess it's where I felt the most comfortable, with the disturbed, the weirdos and the freaks, my people. The only thing that got me through everything was my art, painting, drawing, writing poetry, and my friends. When I finished school, I moved to the biggest and closest city. I wanted to continue working on my art and be around more like-minded people, more creative, young, crazy people like myself. So I moved into a dingy little flat that was filled with roaches and six other young, gothy weirdos. Two of my flatmates made money going on dates with guys and tried to get me to do it with them, but I was never really interested. I always got this image of that profession as some kind of desperate streetwalker, tired, cold, inappropriately dressed for the weather, junkie, that somehow ends up disappearing. Well, I guess that's what I always saw in the movies anyway. Plus, I was happy waiting tables and making coffee for people. And when I wasn't working, I was working on my art, filling endless sketchbooks with ideas and paintings. Me and my flatmates would go out to raves and warehouse parties, and I even broke my rule and dated a few people my own age. I was never really interested in anyone my own age before. I was always into older guys, because with them, I felt safe. They cooked me dinner, they owned houses and cars, and could pick me up when I texted them. A couple of years later, my best friend Ben from school moved to the city too, and we hung out all the time. We've known each other since we were kids. We are practically inseparable. He was super into me, but like I said, I was only interested in older guys, and I didn't want to ruin anything that we had by doing something more. But we did everything together. Things like when I had a key to one guy's house that I was seeing, and Ben and I would raid his liquor cabinet while he was at work, and take long baths together drunk on port. When he followed me to the city, my flatmates managed to convince him to start going out on dates for money as well. I guess a small part of me felt kind of disappointed to see Ben do this. I always thought so highly of him, and he had heaps of different skills, so him doing a job like this seemed kind of like he was selling himself short. But once he started, he was very popular, more so than all of my flatmates. He was constantly getting texts and then disappearing. He was always on the go. It was like a full-time job. But when he was around, he always had money and seemed happy to pay for things. Dinner, drinks, etc. Though sometimes all he wanted to do was smoke and sleep. He'd tell me intimate details of his dates. Where they went, what they did, sizes everything. He even had high-profile clients, like a politician, and a celebrity or two, and also a priest. After a year or so, I finally managed to sell my first artwork in a group exhibition, and I was over the moon. I felt like I had made it, like all my hard work was finally paying off. Someone paid good money to buy my painting, and I was officially paid as an artist. I just wanted to scream it at the top of my lungs. I'm an artist! Then, later on, I was hanging with Ben and celebrating when he asked how much I sold it for. When I told him, he got out a huge roll of cash and said that that was what he'd made just that day. It was triple what I got for my painting. In one day, he made triple what I had made for months and months of busting my ass, conceptualizing and drawing and painting, and even working cafe jobs to save enough to get it framed. Then he also told me about his clients, how they were basically my type anyway. 
older, established guys in suits with cars and houses, and boats even. I think there was just always a part of me that was still that little boy, wondering where his father went, and trying to make up for that loss. I felt like he gave me a wake-up call. I mean, he kinda had a point. If I was into guys like that anyway, why not use that to my advantage? So I decided, okay, fine, I'll do it. But if I was gonna do it, I would do it like Ben. He only took jobs through an agency, out calls with a driver to pick you up and drop you off at someone's house, or in calls at a place run by the agency. That was the safe option. Plus, agencies had a huge established client base they worked off of. There were a couple of agencies to choose from, but I did the same one as Ben. So I went in for an interview. When I walked into the office, there was a tall, buff, older man in a suit, sitting behind a desk with a clipboard and a few other people surrounding him. They straight away asked if I could remove my shirt. So I did. They made some noise of approval, ticked a box on a form, and then asked how old I was, what kind of things I'd be comfortable doing and not doing, where I was from, what name I wanted to use, that kind of thing. However, my first job was awful. After the photos, they took me down the hall from the office and pointed out a couple of rooms that were used for jobs. Both rooms had a large bed, a TV to play racy films if the client wanted, side tables filled with protection and ensuite bathrooms. Then they took me to the common room and introduced me to the other boys. There was a TV, a fridge filled with snacks, comfy leather couches, workout equipment, Wi-Fi, and a smoking area. So we all sort of hung out there. Though you could go out and sort of be on call once you were a little bit more established. In the common room, there was a red light that would blink when there was a client in the house. The manager would come out and say what kind of guy or guys he was looking for. When I was there, the light blinked, and apparently because I was new, the client wanted to meet me too. I was really nervous when it was my turn to meet him. I definitely didn't feel any kind of chemistry with him. He wasn't my type at all, and he didn't seem overly interested in me. He didn't even look at me in the eyes once. He just glanced at my shorts a couple of times with this kind of desperate look. I was a little shocked when I found out that he had picked me. I felt kind of panicked realizing what I'd signed up for. The manager gave me a couple of fresh towels and told me what room he was waiting in. I really didn't enjoy what we did. He didn't look away from the film playing the entire time, and to be honest, it kind of hurt. Afterwards, I just felt kind of used up. I was so happy when our time was over. I felt like I was watching the clock the whole time. And in the end, he didn't even really say goodbye. He just kind of went really awkward again and said thanks and left without looking up once. I definitely considered walking out after that, but I gave it another chance. I wasn't as popular as Ben, but I was definitely a close second. Ben was that real boy next door vibe, tall and naturally athletic. We even did jobs together. We had plenty of requests. We were best friends anyway. It's not like we hadn't seen it all before. There were heaps of other guys too. We called ourselves the Lost Boys, like in Peter Pan. All different types for different tastes. Built, thin, tall, short, blonde, redhead, ethnic, into weird things. One guy I met even had a fiance, and apparently she went on dates for money too. One time I got an out call and it almost made me stop altogether. The thing is, lots of times there were guys that didn't even want to do anything with you. They just wanted to talk or cry on your shoulder or hold you, admire you, get drunk with you. Some people refused to work those jobs and I wasn't sure why until I had this out call. The driver dropped me off and I was standing in front of a tall, decrepit apartment building, cracked cold concrete. I just got a very creepy vibe, like someone was in the shadows watching me. The hedges were all overgrown and graffiti on the door as I walked up and rang the buzzer to the client's room. When I got up there, this very old man in his dressing gown welcomed me in. He was obviously a hoarder and the place had an odd smell. It was dimly lit. He offered me a drink, which I watched him pour, of course, and then we sat down and we talked. He told me all sorts of things about his life, and as the time drew on, he said, You know, I picked you because I've been watching you for a while now. Something about the way he said it made my skin crawl. I mustered an uncomfortable smile 
and then he turned the lamp to show me a wall of printed out pictures of me he had. Not just the headless shots from the agency site, but pictures from my personal Facebook as well, all cut out around the edges and taped to the wall and faded from sunlight. I felt sick to my stomach and stood up. My driver will be here soon, sorry, but I have to go, I said as I quickly walked toward the door. You can't leave, he said. I was terrified. If you leave, you will be the last person that ever sees me. I apologized and let myself out. His words still haunt me to this day. The apartment he was in, I later found out, was infamous for creeps. Part of me feels bad for not staying. And I'd like to tell you that was my last job, but it wasn't. It wasn't even my worst job either. It just stuck with me. But it's not like they were all bad either. But as a person that was still a hurt child inside, looking for love in all the wrong places, I can tell you that hurt of my father leaving me has never completely gone away. I'm in my 30s now, and I still feel messed up. I still make art and draw and write sometimes, and sometimes I just give my art away to those who love it because life is too short. But one thing I can tell you, if I ever become a father, I am going to be a lot of a better one than mine ever was. Just being present can make a world of difference because I never want anyone else to go through the soul-wrenching journey of always feeling like you're never good enough, that you're easily forgotten, that you're expendable. And a word of advice to any bad dads out there who think their kid will get over it, I never did.